I'd like to share what I feel the Lord has given me to share with everyone today. I'd like to start out with a poem or inspiration that God sent us a Savior. If our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would send us an economist. But our greatest need was forgiveness. So God sent us a Savior. Uh, I would like to share this beautiful inspiration. It's called The Three Nails. This is a story of long ago of a man who owned a little store. He said, I was proud to have my name over the door. It was some 2,000 years ago, as I recall, located in Jerusalem across the street from Pilate's Hall. I thought I had everything anyone would need, and the folks would come from miles around regardless of their creed. The one thing I had I didn't think I could ever sell was in the corner on a shelf. It was three old rusty spike nails. And then one day, a big Roman soldier came through the door. As he walked up to me, it seemed he shook the floor. I said, can I help you, sir? And with a voice, I guess, seemed frail. He looked at me with a sneering grin and said, I want to buy some big, big nails. Three rusty spikes is all I have. He said to me, that will do the job I have. Three's enough. Now, how much do I owe you? He put the money in my hand, and I was glad to make the sale. Then I wondered, and I asked him, Sir, what can you do with just three nails? He said, Did you ever hear of a man called Jesus the Nazarene? You mean the one who goes about doing good, he said? Yes, that's the man. Well, today I intend to show the world that I am boss. For with these three old rusty spikes, I'm going to nail Jesus to the cross. I stood there almost numb. You'll never know how I felt. I said, please, sir, don't do that. As on my knees, I knelt. He just turned and walked away, and I got up and I followed him. I said, please, sir, don't. I'll buy them back. But he just looked at me, and he grinned. But in the distance, I could see the howling mob through the tears that filled my eyes. Away with him. Crucify him. I could hear their angry cries over the top of all the noise and the groans of agony. I could hear the sound of a hammer as that big old soldier nailed Jesus to a tree. Next, I'd like to share an inspiration. It's called At Calvary. God did something for you in the death of Jesus that he never did for angels. He permitted his son to face the gloom that you may experience the glory. He permitted his son to be lacerated that you may not be lacerated. He permitted his son to be forsaken that you may be forgiven. He permitted his son to be smitten that you may be saved. Listen, my friends, because of this, Christ of Calvary, you can find healing through his wounds, life through his death, and pardon through his blood, and salvation through his suffering. Thanks to the Christ of Calvary, I am not the person I used to be. And that was written by Don Thornburg. Next, I'd like to share an inspiration called the cross. The cross is a reminder of the blood Christ died for me. It reminds me that I'm a Christian everywhere I may be. Upon the cross, Christ took my sins because I'm too weak to bear. And he gave me life of peace and love that to others I am to share. The cross reminds me to be grateful for all it means to me. Christ is my Lord and Savior if I just let him be. The cross reminds me to be forgiving and to do for others when I can. For God came to earth in Jesus Christ to take the sins of man. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and his love is very real. I have accepted him into my heart and his grace in me I feel. The cross reminds me to be thoughtful for everyone to see, never forgetting Jesus Christ on it and the price he paid for me. For those who spread falsehood, for them I especially pray. The cross reminds me 
this is good and to keep on living this way. And that's James Farrell. Next, I'd like to share an inspiration call. There's something about that name. Jesus, the mere mention of his name, can calm the storm, heal the broken, raise the dead. At the name of Jesus, I've seen sin-hearted men melted, transferred, transformed, the lights of hope put back into the eyes of a hopeless child. At the name of Jesus, hatred and bitterness turn to love, and forgiveness, arguments cease. I've heard a mother softly breathe his name at the bedside of a child with fever, and I've watched that little body grow quiet and the fever cool. I've sat beside a dying saint, the body racked with pain, who in those final seconds summoned their last ounce of ebbing strength to which earth's sweet name he said, Jesus, Jesus. Emperors have tried to destroy it. Philosophers have tried to stape it down. Triads have tried to wash it from the face of the earth with every blood of those who claimed it, yet still it stands. And there shall be that final day when every voice has uttered a sound. Every voice of Adam's race shall rise in a great mighty choir proclaiming the name of Jesus. For in that day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Ah, so you see, it was not mere chance that caused the angel one night long ago to say to a virgin maiden, His name shall be called Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know, there is just something about that name. Next, I'd like to share uh, an inspiration. It is called The You in Jesus. Before you were thought of, or time has begun, God stuck you in the name of His Son. And each time you pray, you'll see it's true. You can't spell Jesus and not include you. You're a pretty big part of His wonderful name. For you, He was born. That's why He came. And His great love for you is the reason He died. It even takes you to spell crucified. Isn't it thrilling and splendor, too, that he rose from the dead with you in his plan? The stone split away and the gold trumpet blew, and Jesus came into view, and this world resurrection is spelled with a U. When Jesus left earth at his upward ascension, he felt there was one thing he just had to mention. Go into all the world and tell them it's true, that I love them all just like I love you. So many great people are spelled with a U. Don't they all have a right to know Jesus, too? It all depends now on what you will do. He'd like them all to know, but it all starts with you. Next, I'd like to share an inspiration. It's called Good Friday, and that we have just celebrated. Uh, This is a day that he suffered. This is a day that he died the day that he was martyred, and the day the angels cried. This is the day the soldiers jerked, and when they nailed him to the cross, the day that foolish people cheered, not aware of their great loss. This is a day the doves flew away, the day that his blood ran free. This is a day that mankind was saved, this day at Calvary. This is a day of headache, the day of sacrifice. This is a day he led the way into paradise. This is a day we need to pray. We need to fall upon our knees. This is a day we need to say, Father, forgive us, please. Next, I'd like to share an inspiration. Maybe you shared this. Maybe you haven't. I like it. It's called The Legend of the Dogwood. There is a legend that at the time of the crucifixion, the dogwood had to be the size of an oak or another forest trees. So firm and strong was a tree that was chosen as a timber for the cross. To be used thus for such a cruel purpose greatly distressed the tree, and Jesus nailed upon it since this, and in his gentle pity for all sorrow and suffering said to it, Because of your regret and pity for my suffering, never again shall the dogwood tree grow large enough to be used as a cross. Henceforth it shall be slender and bent and twisted, Its blossoms shall be in the form of a cross, two long and two short petals. 
and in the center of the outer edge of each petal there will be nail prints, brown with rust and stained with red. And in the center of the outer edge of each petal there will be nail prints, brown with rust and stained with red. And in the center of the flower there will be a crown of thorns, and all those who see it will remember Jesus by the dogwood. Next, I'd like to share an inspiration called the jelly bean pear. And I like to share this when we eat jelly beans at uh, Easter time, uh, the different colors in the jelly beans. Red is for the blood Christ gave. Green is for the grass he made. Yellow is for God's light so bright. Orange is for prayers at night. And black is for the sins we made. And white is for the grace he gave. Purple is for his hour of sorrow and pink is for his new tomorrow. A jar full of jelly beans, colorful and sweet, is a prayer, a promise, and a special treat. God fills our hearts and our lives with the joy of the resurrection of Christ through all of these wonderful jelly beans we get to enjoy during Easter. Next, I'd like to share a beautiful poem. It's called One Day. You only have one life to live. Do all the good you can to make the world a better place for all your fellow man. You only have one life to live. Time is fleeting fast. Only the good that you can do will forever last. You only have one life to live. Be true to God and man. The faults will someday disappear, and truth will rise again. You only have one life to live. Let love rule in your heart, and you will know the peace of God when you have done your part. This is another thing I like to share. I usually share this during Christmas, but this is, uh, we can relate this to Easter. The title of it is Jesus Christ is Coming to Town, but we can relate this as the rapture. This is our inspiration, our hope, our, our, our thoughts as we wait for the rapture. It says, wipe away your tears, get rid of your fears. Here's the best news you've heard in years. Jesus Christ is coming to town. That's the rapture. He's making a list in the book of life. That'll be the end of your trouble and strife. Jesus Christ is coming to town. That's the rapture. He loves you when you're sleeping. He loves you when you're awake. He loves you when you're bad or good. But be good for Jesus' sake. Now put on a smile. Get rid of that frown. Spread the good news all around. Jesus Christ is coming to town. And that will be the rapture, which we're all looking forward to. Next, I would like to share uh, inspiration. I love this so very much. I was blessed to be able to share this at my brother's funeral, and I believe that you will enjoy this at Easter time because it's called a wedding invitation. It's when Jesus takes us all home. It says, you're invited to a wedding that will be held soon. We are the bride and Christ is the groom. With a crown to wear and a long white robe, we'll walk down the aisle made of pure gold. What is your answer? How will you respond? The groom is asking the bride to come, and the supper will be in heaven, our new home above. Here's a wedding invitation he's sending with love. Now, if Daniel can come from a lion's den, if the fire can't be touched with Hebrew children, if Lazarus can make it out of the grave, you and I can go by the way of being saved. What is your answer? How will you respond? The groom is asking the bride to come, and the supper will be in heaven, our new home above. Here's a wedding invitation he's sending with love. That's 1 Corinthians thirteen thirteen, and that is the rapture we're all looking forward to. God bless you. I hope you've enjoyed these inspirations. You have a wonderful week, and I look forward to sharing with you next week. God loves you, and I do too, and happy Easter to everyone. Thank you.